So I did a rant uh, last week, and I was talking about two-track mixing versus multi-track mixing, and, and I actually got in a conversation with, with a guy off of Facebook, and he was calling two-track mixing with vocals karaoke. It's like you're mixing your vocals with a karaoke track. I, I got the comparison. It's not That's not what it is, but I do get the point he was making. When you do mix your vocals with a two track, you are in the karaoke style, so to speak. Well, not so much karaoke. You are in the realm of not really having your stuff sound like an actual recording. So I have a track here that I'm about to use as an example, and it's in the line of drill music. So rest in peace, Pop Smoke. It's within that realm. And there's a difference between what Pop Smoke has done and people like him versus what these guys are doing. And because there's a difference between what he's doing, what they're doing, there may have been some tips and tricks that were done if Pop Smoke was given an MP3. I don't know, I doubt it. What I hear between what he has is that the instruments play their space. With this particular track, the track does play its space, but it does not play its space in reference to, in, in relations, should I say, to the vocals, and that's the trick here. So this is sort of a pity, piggyback off of what I talked about last week, and it's sort of a continuation. And what would you do if you're given such an issue? What do you, how do you play with the tracks? It's not over. If you have a two track, there are some things that you can do to give it a little bit of something, a little bit of space per se, so things could have a distinct sound, have, you know, poke out in a way that you need it to be poked out. So before we really take up too much time in this whole introduction and stuff, let's just get to it. We're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna try and actually see me, well, me watch you guys, or you guys watch me as I do this thing over here. And we're gonna actually just take a stab at listening to the track a little bit. I'm gonna really just focus on the music. I'm not gonna play the vocals just yet because it's too racy. So, and I just wanna really focus on the track and nothing else. And then we're gonna really kind of really get into what can be done. I'm considering repositioning this camera, but I don't know where. So we'll worry about that later. Okay, so I think this is gonna work. So as you can see, me seeing you or you guys seeing me, as I'm talking about this thing over here, this is going to work. I'm in the market for a Joby Gorilla Pod, so I think that's what I'm getting tomorrow. So anyway, enough of that. I never really needed one before, so now I think I do need one. So I'm in the market for one. So anyway, this is the track here, and as you can see, it's a simple, nothing but a two track, and left and right, you know, that's what a two track really means, left channel, right channel, of a piece of instrument, it's not mono, um, and the rest are just nothing but vocals. They recorded their vocals fairly decent, uh, issues here and there, nothing serious, but uh, I have it mapped out to do the things that I needed to do. Um, and now the beginning process is really the mix. Before we get into the vocals and stuff like that, which I did kinda already do, the focus is really how do you play with the music to make it sound like you have a little bit more individual space. There really isn't any individual space going on in here because it's a two track. So I don't have the power to manipulate things like I would if it were a multi-track. So it would be the kick, the snare, the everything, the instruments, the everything that I would normally have. And that is a far better mix than what we're doing. We're really playing with the two track and we're really mixing the vocals to it and not balancing everything in accordance to what's going on. That's a real mix. This is not not a real mix, but this is what we're left with. Now, I reached out to the artist to see if he could get the actual individual tracks. And if he could, that'd be good. If he can't, well, then we're stuck with what we're stuck with. We're not trying to re- mix your stuff per se. We're trying to actually balance your stuff with the artist's voice. 
We don't want it to make it sound like a mixtape, which can happen in cases like this. It won't sound like an original raw made for radio or whatever the case have you. Your better producers, better artists are doing things not so quite like this. And if they are, then the engineer knows that, that what the hell he's doing. So I'm going to try and be one of those producers who uh, actually think they know what they're doing. You're going to take a listen to the music and you're going to see what I'm talking about as far as how simple and flat this really is. So you heard more than you were supposed to. For the most part, you heard the music, right? It didn't sound bad. It didn't sound great. It just sounded as stuff. So what we want is we want a little bit more stuff to happen. Now, you hear things playing on the right and the left, but you're not hearing it in the way that I think you should hear it. I think I want to hear more of that kick because I'm a kick person, and I want to hear a little bit more of the the ethereal material sounding stuff, the the synth or whatever that is. I want to hear that distinct. I mean, like when I say distinct, I mean like really distinct. Now, there's nothing that I could do to make that stuff sound spacey, because whatever they did, they did what they did to make it sound like the way they wanted it, and it doesn't sound bad. But I want for what I think it is that the song could do, I want it to be a little bit more more uh, withy. Ethereal is a bad word because I don't even think that's a word pertaining to music. I just want some some stuff happening and I can't get it because it's a two track. So the most I could do is have this on to bring some of the oomph back into the material of the track. So let's really take it from here and see what we get. Okay, so let's take off something is delaying uh, yeah, let's bypass all that bypass all that bypass all of that uh, all right good so i don't think we'll hear any more of her all right so i think you guys heard the difference this is just a simple eq the eq is boosted a little bit uh i want to say a lot of bit. the low end is boosted and there's a little bit of playing with the space in the left and the right channels of this eq so let's bypass it again and see if we hear any difference between the two. Now listen to that kick as it goes boom. It's like that boom. It's it's minor, but that's the thing I would want a little bit more forward. And I could push this more, but I, of course I don't want it to clip. And the clipping is more of a digital thing than it is an actual thing. It's not really clipping, but it could show up later on if it will clip, if I let it go, if I let that clipping go. So I don't want to ignore that. So let's just, for the sake of it, make this 6.5 for the hell of it and see what happens. And here we go. <laughs> Listen to that boom. It's a good bat boom. We're gonna bypass it and see if you hear it, and then 
see if you could hear it when it's unbypassed. And here we go. Okay, one more time. Uh, unbypassed. Now, that's better, not, still not what I want, but a lot better. Um, so what I do now, or what I did, is to put the C6 um, on here, let me get rid of you, Mink, and I, I, I don't know if I'm gonna keep this. Uh, I didn't really do anything crazy, I just played with some settings, I brought some highs up a little bit and I definitely brought more of the low end up but I'm still playing with this I'm not saying that this is the correct anything as far as this is concerned what I'm saying is this brought a little bit more umph in relations to their track it may not be a keeper I don't know but tell me if you guys see if you notice a difference so it's on now <laughs> And I'm gonna unbypass it and or bypass it. I said unbypass. That was stupid. And we're gonna bypass it and play it again. So now it's off and see if you if you miss anything. So unbypassed and one more time so to me that bass feels more round and I kind of like that roundness that I think I'm hearing from this particular um, plugin. And again, there's still more playing around with it. Um, and I'm using these headphones, not what I would use to really listen to this. But again, I think it's getting closer to what I want. Um, and so it's, it's a keeper, it's staying in the chain. The next thing I would do is to give it some space at this point is now use, of course, the ever popular midside. A lot of people are still in the dark somewhat of what midside is. And long story short, a mid is what happens in the middle and the side is what happens on the sides. So it's not your left and right per se, it's the sides of it, it's the round areas of it. It's what happens on the sides, if you would, of your wall. That's perfect example I, I think I could make it into. So it's not the left and the right, the, the, the far left and the far right. It's the stuff that happens in between that on the right side of the sides of the right and sides of the left. It's the information that's happening there. And the mid is actually what's happening in the middle. So usually for the lack of a better word, my ethereal stuff that happens in that happens a little sprinkly stuff, it happens on the sides. And and the mid stuff is the stuff that usually is like the kick, the snare, the vocals and stuff like that. So we're gonna use this pretty thing. Oh, we're gonna wait, make it active. And now we're gonna use this and we're gonna, it's, 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 it's bypassed and we're gonna unbypass it in the second. So we're gonna listen to it, of course, not active or at least not on and then we're gonna turn it on so here we go all right so now we're gonna unbypass it and see if you hear 
some stuff happening that's different if you hear some more space type of stuff happening so here we go so it's subtle it's minor it's not that much going on for the sake of this tutorial, we will extremely go crazy so you could hear what I'm trying to go for. So right now it's soloed for only the sides to play. So, and this is what the EQ was hearing. So let's take a listen. So that's what I want to hear. I want to hear more of that ding, ding, ding. I want to hear more of that melody just all over the place. And and it's kind of doing it, not doing it, because I don't know if he did it. I'm going to assume that he did. I could use something to give me an idea if he did do it. I could use a analyzer, which I'm not using. Again, simply because I'm lazy. And um, But it, it sounds like it's happening, but a lot of mid stuff is still happening, even while I'm hearing it only in the sides. So let's listen to it again with this extremity having taken place here. And let's see if we hear more of that melody more spread, so to speak. So if you listen closely and you, re you want to rewind and keep rewinding back, you hear that when the EQ is activated, that it is open a little bit more. I have to be careful because what I did sort of do is on this Fairchild part, which I think is this one. No, that's uh, it's over here somewhere. Let's make life simple and look for it this way. On this, I kinda had a little bit of um, compression happening on the right side. So I may wanna reduce that. I did that for an effect. I didn't do that for anything particular, like something was wrong on the right and nothing was wrong on the left. I didn't do it for any of that. I was just playing around and I, I had a little bit more information playing on the right. So let's put that back center. Okay, so that was crazy. So my camera, got hot. That's the first time it's ever happened, my first experience ever of this happening. But it's no fault to the Sony because I kind of have it sitting on something that I don't think it should be sitting on. So I'll be a little bit more mindful. So actually, I think I'm going to just go here and stay here for the remainder of this video so this poor camera doesn't just conk out on me. But that's the first this has ever done that to me. And it's never done that before. I've never had any issues with a camera ever getting too hot but i think i know why they did that so it's no fault of sony sony much respect to you this is the first that's ever happened to me and uh we're not going to have that happen again so i think i should have that on a um jovi or joby gorilla pod and i think that will alleviate half of that so back to this so i don't really think this is really what the issue is um, but for the sake of experimentation, I'm going to put it kind of back to normal and we're going to toggle over and go back up here and play with this and see how much more of this side information can we get without having something else affect it. So does that kind of make sense?
All right. So I hear what I want to hear. What I would have liked to hear was those key hits. Ding, 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 ding. Travel from right to left, so to speak. Now, I could sort of do that, but it's going to affect everything, and I don't want that. So we're fine with what it's doing. This is the midsection. I put a little bit more boost here, and I took a little bit of a dip down here. Um, and you could see my emphasis is still on the low end. I want to hear more of that low end. The low end section, the bottom end, the, the midsection stuff is what usually you would either reduce or bring up in a case like this in a midside uh, situation. I don't want midside compression. I just want to separate. And that's what this is doing. I could, I could use a number of things that I think it would kind of do that. I have uh, uh, Brainworks. I think that's what it is by BX, uh, BX Brainworks. Really awesome uh, plug-in. Too powerful for me to really kind of use right now because I have a lot more going on and I intend to do more. So even though this computer could take it, it's pretty awesome as a EQ with midside um, with midside compression. I'm sorry, with midside processing going on. But this is the part that I want a little bit more pronounced, and I have it at a UK modern sweep. I might just go back to this and then do that and then switch it over here a little bit. But I kind of do like what this was doing because it gave me the notch that I was looking for, which is that bend. Notice the difference. Open. A little bit more notched. So that's kind of what I wanted to do. And uh, let's see what the U.S. looks like. Yeah, a little bit more open. We don't want that. We want the U.K. Boom. And 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 I didn't really want it too far down. And I didn't want it too far up. This is pretty good. I already have everything already in the 60, 50 range. I don't want to keep putting everything in that area. Um, let's put it back to 80. And, and again, just take a listen intently and see if you hear the difference with everything off and then everything on. So it's on now. So that's pretty much it. There's so many more things that could be done. But with everything kind of off, I think it sounds fairly flat or flatter. So everything is off. Let's take a listen. back on So there you, there you have it. I mean, there's not much I, I could use more as an example of what's going on other than I think more energy has been brought out to the track. If you look at the track it, within itself, it's fairly energetic. I mean, I'm not saying it's like, it's not looking like this or nothing like that. I mean, it's definitely energetic. Uh, let's put this back to default. It's definitely energetic. Um, I like the dips. I like the fact that it's not squashed. It's not looking like this or anything like that. I hate tracks that look like that. In fact, I think if I start getting tracks that look like that, I'm not I'm not doing anything with it because there's nothing that can be done. Um, so it's it's doing what it needs to do. The the channel is not clipping within itself. Um, it's it's fine, uh, and I think it's great. But more space has been given. But the key is you want 
distinct stuff happening. The kick in the middle and the boom. You want it to sit in your face, so to speak. And the stuff that happens in the sprinkle, you want it to be sprinkled. There are things actually happening right and left. I would have preferred more not to take away from the person who did this track. It sounds good. I just know what I think I would want to hear in reference to these guys' vocals. A track on its own, it's great. And to use as an example, um, Jalil Beats did something for, um, what's his name? Rick Rick Ross, and it's called uh, Python, Crocodile Python. And uh, I like the track, uh, but the track by itself, it knocks. I think there could have been a little bit more something, nothing that I would have done differently, but in relation to the vocals, it's it's perfect. And and, and it's a great song. I like the song a lot. Uh, I noticed What's His Face likes a lot of his tracks loud. That's a preference, I think, of Jalo Beats. Um, but... It's it's dope. So I think there was nothing wrong there. But the beat by itself, you know, it's I don't want to say it's static. It it is what it is. But with the with the vocals on it, it actually you you hear the spread, so to speak. It could be just me. I could be hearing different. You know, I am weird, and I think that's pretty much it. But two tracks limit you in some of the things you could do creatively as an engineer or as a producer doing something with people's vocals. It's a lazy way to get the point out as far as tracks are concerned. You could you could record all day and you have all the power in the world to record this way. You're not killing your computer. And by all means, if you're doing that, then I say do that. But when it comes to a real mix, listen to some of your favorites. Again, Pop Smoke, his stuff actually has some distinct things going on. And ironically, I think what happens musically is different from what I think happens to his vocals that were treated, the processing of his vocals. So that's just me not trashing anybody. Let me not even say that. I think what happens with his vocals are different from what happens to his track because his track has an imaginary space that it puts you in. And Pop Smoke sits in the middle of that space. And it sounds awesome. So I don't wanna lose any fans or anything like that who listen to me, because I'm not trashing Pop Smoke by no means. I just think that what happens to his vocals on some parts, on some songs, are different from what sits with the vo- with the with the track. I don't even know if I should even say that. I might not even keep this part, but I just say, hey, that's what you wanna go for. You wanna be able to go for your two track, if you're stuck with something like this, you wanna go with your two track and you wanna space it out. You wanna, if you can, if you can't ask for the um, stems or the individual parts and you might get lucky, you know, and then you could really play around with mixing. That's what this whole thing is all about, mixing, not just taking vocals, all this good stuff, and then mixing it with that. It's, it's limit to a certain degree. But if this is what you're stuck with, these are some recipes that you could go for. Space out as much as you can. Not too much, because you don't want too much space or too much width, but you do want some separation. And I think that's the key. So that's pretty much it. So you guys could get to see what happens when you are stuck with a two-track. And again, there's nothing wrong with two-track mixing. Some of the better songs have been done on four tracks. Uh, there was some stuff I used to listen to in my younger years where it was some great sounding stuff, but it was done on four tracks. So it's not to say that you cannot do anything with a, a two track or four track or eight track or whatever the case is. It's just usually some things in this day and time are usually looking for more space. And with a two track, you're kind of limited to what you can get as with a multi-track. So this is sort of the point I'm trying to get at. Multi-track mixing is far better than a two-track mix. You're limited when you have a two-track mix, and if you are limited, then these are the kind of angles that you could kind of get to do some things to open up your two-track and make your two-track sound like it has a bit of life to it. So I hope 
you guys got what I had to say here today. So hit the like and the subscribe, hit the little belly thing to let you guys know when I'm coming with stuff when I'm coming with stuff. And before I go there, this little dude ad got hot. This is the first time it ever really got hot. And I've used this on countless number of recording stuff. And it recorded endlessly. Uh, well, it, it has a time limit. I'm in the market for another one. Um, not this one. I'm considering getting a, a 4K camera. And I'm really contemplating. Because I don't know if I really want to spend that money. But if not, a higher end HD uh, camera that kind of has the look of a 4K. So, but this is actually pretty good. And it actually, I trashed it one time. And then I gave it some kudos. And it actually held up its weight. Um, it's the first time it ever got hot. I never had an issue with any of them going hot. Uh, and it got hot. That's because I didn't have the vent open and I had it sitting on a stack of, of containers that I got from the container store. So that's why I'm in the need for a Joby. But that's another situation. We'll get into that later. Hit the like and subscribe. Hit the little belly thing. Let you guys know I'm coming with stuff. I'm coming with stuff. And I will see you in the next one. So later. Mm -hmm.